Hi everyone, for this week's video, I will show you how I did my Christmas socks or my Christmas stocking. <laughs> First, I will cast on with my waist yarn, one in the front, one in the back. For the first row, I did that project on the 46 at the Express knitting machine. So you see number five on the screen, so it means I will do five rows with the waist yarn. But only cast on the first row like this. Open the yarn feeder, put it in, and then you crank for five rows. When you reach your five rows, you put that in the middle, bring your working yarn, the red, and you will do 25 rows with the red, 20 with the white, and 25 with the red, and five with waist yarn. So I repeat, five, 25, 20, 25, five. Put that in your notebook. So I do the color change with the white, attach it together. We don't attach the waist yarn to the project yarn because we have to remove the waist yarn at the end. It's very important to use contrasting yarn for your uh, waist yarn. So I continue to crank and when the work is touching the table, it's time to roll it like this to prevent drop stitch or broken needle. So now it's time to the cast off. For the cast off, I open the yarn feeder, measure how much I need. I go uh, to a screw to another one and then I will crank the machine without the yarn in the yarn feeder so it will release the machine the stitch from the machine. I was supposed to use waste yarn. I just noticed that I made a mistake, but it's okay. I will fix that later. I will show you how to fix it. I'm sure it's already happened to you too. Forgot to put the waste yarn. So I will remove one by one every stitches. I will put it a little bit faster to save some time. So that 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 part is the body of the Christmas socks. So I will stretch it and put that away for now. Now I will go with the eel cast on the first row without any waste yarn. The only place we have the waste yarn needed it was with the first piece. All the rest you don't need it. So we'll we will do 20 rows with the white for the eel. Pull the yarn and then it's very important to remove it from the yarn feeder and do a 360 with it. You could see I have it on my thumbs like, like this, top just before the yarn feeder and then you pick up all your stitches one by one, very important. There. If you miss one, you will end up with a drop stitch and it's not fun in the middle of a project to have drop stitch. There. So now I will do the cast on for the toe. I start with the white one in the front, one in the back. And this time the number will be 10, 20, and 10. Open the yarn feeder, close it, and then crank. 10, 20, and 10. There. When you reach the number you need, you open it, cut the yarn, put it close, and attach it with the double knot. Put the counter to zero if you want and then you continue. Cut the yarn, put that in the middle so the color change is done and crank. Like this, roll it to prevent drop stitch and tension on your uh, peg. And then you crank. I will use the same part as I did earlier because I miss some of the part 
in the video, but you could see you remove it from the yarn feeder, made a full 360, just stop before the yarn feeder, and then you remove your piece. I know what you see, like the color of the yarn, it's not exactly what it's supposed to be, but at least you see the technique. I'm sorry for that. So it will be maybe confusing for people who skip some part of the video because <laughs> the color of the project is not exactly what it's supposed to be. But at least you see the technique. Sorry for that. So this is the toe. We just secure it our knot and then we will stretch it a little bit and do like when you do a hat. Pull on your string of yarn. Make sure it's not all jammed in one side. A reminder, 10, 20, and 10. There. Pull on this one too. So with the wool needle, I will make sure it's tight and no hole in the middle. There. Like this and then you do the same thing with the other part. I will attach those two tail together there and cut it and then hide it between the two layers. Cut the excess, stretch it and put that aside for now. So we come back with the eels. The eel was with 20 rows. So I attach one side, secure it. There, keep myself a little loop to do the knot like this. There, we'll do the other side now. Almost finish. There. So you join the two pieces of yarn together going through the middle. And then you hide it between the two there. And I will put that part aside for now. Oh, I still have one to hide. I forgot this one. There. So now it's the body of the Christmas socks. I secure my knot, cut the excess. I always keep like three centimeter there. So a reminder, 5, 25, 20, 25, and 5 for the body. As you could see, I have one waist yarn, and I don't have in here, but I will fix that. It's very easy to fix that. You just take the same color that you use for your waist yarn, take your wool needle, and we will grab all the stitches like this. Why? Because it will be easier to pick up all the stitches when we will attach it together with our hook. If you're not comfortable with a hook, you could check in the video description. I will have a link. It's five ways to close a tube and you will be able to do it with the uh, wool needle. It's not the perfect way, but at least it will give you the opportunity to do some project until you get better with your hook. There, almost finished. Stretch it. It's very tight. It's important to have a loom hook to just release the tension on the stitch sometime. They get very easy with the wool needle to pick up after that. There. So now with the hook number 4.5, I will go and attach those two together. Put that a little bit closer. So I'll grab one stitch on one side, 
one stitch on the other side one stitch on one side pull in and one on the other side I will do that till I come back on my starting point there there need that loom hook it's very handy to have it close to you when you get stitches that are too tight to work properly see it's very important to have a different color for your waist yarn so you could see where is your right stitch to pick always pick the one in your working yarn I will put that a little bit close, not closer, but faster. And now I reach almost the finish line. <laughs> Very important to grab all the stitches. And it could be a little bit confusing at the end. So be careful to pick up all the stitches. But you will see I miss one, but I will show how to fix it. Don't worry. I leave it in the video because I know probably happened to you too and if nobody show you how to fix it it could be a uh, frustrating sometimes me if I do mistake or <laughs> mistake I show it in my video so I remove the waist yarn that I put with my wool needle now it's time to remove the one that I cast on at the beginning usually you have a little knot to remove and then you remove just the first layer row but I was not able to find it the only way I end up to remove it it's from the bottom like this but usually I don't do that like this but it worked so I continue like that if it's work it's good <laughs> if it's not I will find another way but this worked well so I will continue like this there Put that a little bit faster and then just have to pull on it and voila all the yellow is gone so now I told you I have a drop stitch so I will go and fix the drop stitch it's here on my finger so I will bring my my yarn with the wool needle closer take the hook grab the stitch there you don't see it but I have two drop stitch I grab one and the second one was not on the video sorry so I do a knot and I will bring my tail back to the the, the other tail to attach those two together like that there and I did between the two layers so this part was the longest thing to do for this pattern if you survive this part <laughs> you okay <laughs> you could breathe now <laughs> there so now I will cut my yarn I will need six little piece of red because I will use it as a stitch marker I don't bother to find my classic one I'm getting used to do that with yarn like this so I save all my little piece of yarn and finish as a stitch marker I just fold my uh, project in half it's to divide it if you want to count it you could but me I didn't do it I just go like this I did that you see there are different length I will hide it on the side so you will not see it the visual will be just fine I fold it that was a little trick and then same thing here and voila it's it's ready so now I will attach those two together I will grab one side one full stitch I will put it f closer just a minute there you could see better so one full stitch here be careful sometimes the yarn divide 
and grab another one here. I don't go tight now because I'm scared to make a mistake and sometimes it's hard to fix it if it's too tight. I usually just tight it at the end. I pull on the yarn. So I will continue like that. One on one side, one full stitch on the other side. Put that a little bit faster. Don't worry, I will re reduce my, my speed when I get close to the red, uh, not the red, the orange stitch marker. So I continue like that and you're almost finished you attach this I was not very equal for this part but it's okay was one stitch on the side that was one over so I pull on it this side I will pull on it on the other side be careful, don't pull too much because you don't want to change the shape of your socks. And then you stretch it back with your thumbs. It will look like this, a straight, like this. So, time to put the eel. So I will go orange on orange. Start there on the white. Grab one stitch and go on the white. this almost finished if you're still here can you put the, a smiley on the comment and please don't forget to put a thumbs up please 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 it helped my channel if I get a lot of thumbs up and I don't really get a lot of thumbs up I have a lot of you but not a lot take the time to put the thumbs up and it's very important to put the thumbs up so if you put a thumbs up, YouTube will provide more of you. Will uh, put my video t suggestion to uh, to be seen by some other people that are not in my uh, members. So when you get close to the orange, I find out the way it's when you pinch the two pieces like this, it's easier to stay on the same row. So when I arrive here, I go slowly there to make sure the intersection, I grab all the, the right place to prevent any old in the intersection. There, grab it here. And I will go on the red again before I go to the white, just to prevent an old. There. Continue. We'll put that a little bit faster. And I will slow down. Don't worry. Like this. See, I will end up with the old right there, but I will show you how to fix it. See, there's too many stitch here because I didn't count. So I grab the white and I go on the side, grab a full stitch and I will go on the other side. Grab a full stitch, pull a little bit and voila, the, the hole is, is gone. <laughs> so time to fix that, do the knot, almost finished. Hope you enjoyed this little video don't miss the next week video I always provide one video a week when I can't it's because I'm sick sorry for that <laughs> there cut the excess do that on the other side put that a little bit faster cut the excess and voila Hope you enjoy my video. See you next week for a new video and never give up. Ciao, ciao.